Hello folks. She's a beautiful morning here in Saskatchewan. She cleared off a bit and uh, and had a big thunderstorm come through here last night and rain was much needed for us non-farmers but Saskatoon was getting awful dry. You can water and water your lawn and never keep up. <coughs> Anyway, why I wanted to get on here this morning was talk about the game last night, Winnipeg Hamilton. Uh, since I watch all these games anyway, I thought I might as well put some comments on about the games. Uh, on social media late last night and this morning, and uh, people talking about the game and so many people uh, are getting so frustrated with the command center calls it's scaring me I know I complain about them full bore and I just can't figure it out you know they put out a big statement about they're gonna change their ways and and uh, it showed a bit in the last couple games what their intentions are if they don't see a something that stands out that the refs made a bad call they're just gonna stay with that call i'm not sure i agree with that you know not a ah it's such a hard thing to to determine you know uh, like the one that bothered me the most, I guess, last night's game was, again, the pass interference. You know, the CFL has to determine what pass interference, how much they're going to allow and how much they're not going to allow. I said that early in the season when it wasn't a Ryder game. It was, I think it was a Winnipeg Bomber game. I've said this before, but where they came on, there was no call in the field, and and uh, they challenged it, and the guy, the defender, barely touched the guy's left arm, didn't alter his, you know, turn him or do anything, just had his arm slightly on it, his forearm, and. That's all I could see anyway. And uh, they called it pass interference. And uh, they're going, oh my God, is this gonna be the standard? And I'm so against that. Uh, I'd for let the defender play, allow some hand fighting, you know, as long as you don't knock them right off uh, off of his line and or turn him or anything like that leave him hand fight but and one criteria is do not grab the jersey you know like you grab the jersey you make it an easy call for the officials well what i would think would be an easy call obviously not like that was a big game changer in the game last night was a deep ball on the right side of the field right near the goal line and Hamilton gets that one they have a very good chance of winning the game and uh, uh, Milanovic he challenges it the pass interference and because it wasn't called on the field <coughs> and uh, they ch go to the challenge and then I watch the replays they show and man there's all sorts of hand fighting now, like I said I don't mind that but he grabbed him right by the the V in the in the uh, jersey and uh, uh, to me that's a no-no and it's an easy call and 
No, there was no call. Play on the field stands. And, oh boy, how sad as far as I'm concerned. I thought, well, no way that, like I was going by the, our game, previous game with sales again. Like, good God, he got a couple called on him again that, you know, the one he had a hold of jersey, I said, oh, you're sunk. They're gonna, they're gonna call that. And yeah, they did. And another one, he's just where the guy does his acting class and, and they end up giving a, a penalty for pass interference. My gripe on the whole situation with the uh, command center is that on fish on pass interference, they've got to set some sort of standard there. Uh, they just don't seem to keep it. Not, not in my version anyway, and I, I, I could care less if Hamilton or Winnipeg wins. Of course it's better if Winnipeg loses, but uh, it's a game. It was an exciting game. and. In the end, actually, uh, this Hamilton defense couldn't stop him. And Jones is in there now, and, and he actually played pretty good. Made, you know, like Zach wasn't looking so good. Uh, yeah, I think he coughed up two or three interceptions. And, uh, uh, the only bright spot of their offense was Oliveira for quite a while. <coughs> that they couldn't stop him in the end. That's what cost him. You know. And the only other one with call at last night's game was was that uh, um, turnover where uh, O'Shea challenged and uh, they both went down with the ball and did a somersault and uh, Winnipeg Blue Bomber come up with the ball. Well, again, I, it was called a, a, a down by contact where the guy caught the ball. Well, sorry folks, I don't see that either. <laughs> to me, Hamilton guy caught it all right, but he, right away he lost control of it. And uh, it was, ball was in between them, what I could see. And uh, had, as far as I could tell, it couldn't, didn't touch the ground. It didn't even come close to touching the ground. And uh, bomber guy had it and came up with the ball. You know, me, I'd have overturned that. And I'm not calling him, like I said, but I think that was bomber's ball. You know. Either that or an incomplete pass, one of the two, but it definitely wasn't a caught ball and down by contact, not even close. And uh, a lot of other plays in that game that confused me. Oh, there was another, uh, the Hamilton fans are complaining about the winning touchdown play where they show a picture of Dembski <coughs> a mile offside, which looks like he's a mile offside, but they've got a still pitcher and you can't see the football in the still pitcher. But uh, they had a replay on Sportsnet <coughs> of the touchdown and nah, Dembski hit it perfect. <coughs> right on the numbers he was hit the line of scrimmage exactly on time that's why he looks offside compared to the rest they're slower getting off the ball but that's one play where you know with all receivers in motion in the CFL it's so damn hard to to call that that's sometimes to me those guys look a mile offside, a mile, not even close, and they're never a flag. <clears throat> you know. And uh, 
Uh, it's, it's a hard one to call, but to me, a lot of them are just so offside. I think they just, <laughs> they don't call it anyway. And they, that one there, you can see on the replay that slow it right down. You see that the ball is being snapped and he hits the line of scrimmage right on time. Yeah. Hamilton should have had him stop well before that anyway. They needed a bloody touchdown. Zach came through, redeemed himself. Now yeah, big time. A lot of that game was on his shoulders. Uh, all the turnovers. And uh, they gave him a chance to redeem himself. And he did. Uh, that's the difference. Uh, between Harris and, and Calaris. Calaris still has the ability to scramble a bit, where Harris, he's still not mobile. I don't know if it's, he's still not in perfect condition or, or what, but he's, you know, he, he's like a statue back there. Uh, we should have a good shot at him next game, that's for sure. Like Hamilton showed we can get at him. You know, Calaris also was playing with two of uh, his offensive linemen out. Stanley Bryan, he went out with a medical condition. I think he was overheated. And uh, I've had that happen to me. And uh, it's not a fun feeling. Uh, I suspect he'll probably be back unless they find something medically wrong with him. Uh, I think he'll probably be back for the Ryder game. Uh, the other guy got hurt right after that, not long after that. And he looks like he might be out. Cause he had a pretty good limp on him when he come off the field. And so they had to play. It's a lucky thing they had two guys on the backup. Usually I think they only play with one like ourselves. But uh, um, there's two of them down. And uh, they managed to keep Zach going in that last drive anyway. Plus the run game was good, you know. Oliveira, he had some bloody good runs. Even Augustine didn't play too bad. They got that one-two punch. I'm calling for that with heart. Guys, if we could ever get AJ and Frankie going at the same time. Never seemed to do that, the riders. I, I think we'll be all right, you know. We've been really good against the run. It's just that long plays and in, in the midfield we can't seem to stop nothing nothing at all you know ah that was about all i wanted to say today just i'm really feeling down about that command center it's costing so many fans you know i don't know if these guys are talking the truth here or what you know like whether they'll won't stay watching the cfl but a lot of them just they're fed up like i know i just hold my breath after a, a scoring play that oh my god i hope the command center doesn't find something they can take the points off the board uh, but like, with their new policy uh, uh, they seem to be favoring the calls on the field, which I don't mind. If it isn't blatant, leave it roll. Uh, they all seem to work out in the end. Uh, like last game, you know, Prulo, a lot of Ryder fans don't like him, but it wasn't the refs that caused us to lose that game. In fact, we we're done a favor quite a few times and uh, 
they helped us out actually that's just the way I see it I try to call things I, just, I, I did roughing and I understand their position you know I needed the money back then and that was a way to make money and keep playing hockey at the same time I had rough in hockey it's not an easy job and uh, uh, the CFL has to do get this straightened out like it's still not straightened out as far as I'm concerned they have to put more definition on this pass interference and also roughing the passer is another one that's so suspect there was one last night on Calaris again you know I think he basically got defender got knocked in and barely touches his helmet and pass interference and I think they've got to let him play football you know it's a contact sport and a lot of times these are plays that defender had no chance of missing them <clears throat> anyway I guess the only other one there was that one on tuck when he came and blasted that guy when he's on the ground and then the bomber fan bomber guy comes and gives him a little shove and he gets a a unsportsmanlike conduct roughing for just pushing him but the one what tuck did now that one could be an automatic toss as far as I'm concerned he had no business driving that guy when he's in the ground with his shoulder and he hit him directly in the head <laughs> was, that was a terrible terrible blow I'm sure he'll be fine if he's not there's something wrong there too uh, it was a terrible dirty play Anyway, that's about all I had to say today. Uh, looking forward to the game. The next two games here. Uh, see how that goes. I really want to see that Edmonton Montreal game and see how Rorick does against Ottawa. Wonder if he can bounce back. You know, they might be crying for Adams back faster than they think. Anyway, I hope he gets recovered faster. But anyway, till next time, go riders, go.